Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Dutch for Life. We tell you about our weeks. Uh, my face is puffy, um, as you can probably tell. It's really frustrating me. It looks disgusting. What happened? You got stung by a bee? Yeah, I got stung by a bee or a wasp or something, and my eyes swelled swell up. And now it's like two days post, and my cheeks are all weird. And Doesn't help that you've got a mic. Peter, of... Peter just said that I look like I've got hypothyroidism, <laughs> so obviously. <laughs> a little bit. Obviously, I'm feeling really good about myself right now on camera. Um, so yeah, my week, uh, pretty much the last week, there's been a lot of behind the scenes stuff that's been going on, trying to plan again for the new year, trying to figure out different structures. So I spent like hours mulling over all different things uh, about training for managers, trying to get systems in place. Um, spent a lot of money on the weekend actually on uh, with Black Friday, Cyber Monday, TVs. Um, just trying to deck out the new office, um, also trying to get some systems in place, some... Uh, you can tell anyone that we were moving? Yeah, we've told heaps of people that we okay, were moving several times. Um, are you like sitting further back? You look tiny. Is it just my hypothyroidism? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, now I'm sitting further back. Um, yeah, so playing's been fun. I really enjoy it. I get really excited about it. Um, so that's been good. I don't really know what I'm saying because I'm just constantly thinking about my puffy face. <laughs> He's, but, you've been kicking my ass this week. Like, uh, yeah. next level. Been going home crying every afternoon. Oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> no, really. I'm what? Not. I mean, I've been quite sad. No. I probably need it. No, I really do need it. I, I do get to periods in this position where I kind of just feel like I'm not, I am cruising a little bit, but there's so much that's going on for next year that I've probably got a little bit of a, a contemplation of my place within this ever expanding company. And you've just been smacking me down to try and lift me up, I guess is probably the best way to put it. Would you agree? I'm helping build capacity. There you go. There's your catchphrase. <laughs> nice. So obviously in the new realm of what we're going to achieve in the new year. We need Peter to move into a slightly different position, a more specialised position, and take on some of the things that we've kind of been sharing and do them for ourselves. Um, so we've just been trying to work out how that's going to actually work prior to our need to actually do it. So trying to test the waters before that, um, really extending the rope a lot further, not giving answers um, to her when she asks and when I give her a task, and she asked for my clarification, I've just been going, nope, go for it, tell me. So that's obviously scary uh, when people are getting those stuff and we do that with our dietitians as well. We get to a point where, no, we've talked through this previously, you can do this, just do it. And then what that does, it builds their capacity because then they're aware of, hey, I actually could do this. Or they get to 80% and they thought they would have only got to 20%. And then you just give them that little bit extra and then they move forward and then much better for it. So I guess over the last week, but we've been doing it probably for the last 12 months, but it's just over the last couple of weeks where we've kind of, because it's getting very close to the new year, there's things that we need to tick off. So I've just been pushing her a little bit harder um, in that end, not trying to make her cry. Mm -hmm. And she hasn't been going home crying, I think. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and then we've got change, and not everyone likes change, and our organisation changes a lot. I just did a massive email to everyone about all the stuff that we're looking to change in the new year, um, around that stuff I was talking about in terms of project management systems, but also trying to improve our training, trying to improve our support of staff, um, and trying to improve some video-based stuff with updates, because my updates get really long because of all the stuff that happens in the company, so we're going to try and do some audio or, or video-based stuff as well. Again, just to keep people informed and communicated with in the company, uh, which I think is important. Um, got a lot of interviews. Uh, been like today, I've got like four or five, I think four meetings with people with possibility to bring them on. I've had a couple in the last couple of days about bringing them on in the new year. Um, management level kind of interviews rather than dietitians, um, business operations, um, HR, uh, marketing, um, videographer. Uh, yeah, so it's a lot of different people. Diverse, that hoping, yeah, that we're hoping to, to hire. Yeah, and, and, and it's really it's just hire 
over and above what we need at this time because of what we believe it's going to achieve in the next six to 12 months. Um, so spending that money in the short term for the long term win, which is what our whole business is focused on. So um, that is the goal. Yeah, so that's pretty much been my week. Very not dietitian like, I guess, but that's pretty much my life these days is the business aspect. And we're heading, you're heading, yeah, heading to Perth. Country. Yeah, heading to Perth <laughs> tomorrow to do shadowing and do the dietitian stuff. Um, see the crew over there uh, before they all fly over actually to the Christmas party in Brisbane um, later in the month, um, December. So that'll be cool as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Peter will get to meet them. Peter hasn't met them in person, so she'll get to do that for the first time while she's had a couple of wines. That should be fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, what have you done? What's your week? Other than crying. Oh, look, I did have a moment on Monday. I can't say I cried, but I was close. Mm -hmm. I was there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that, my friend, is growth because I know it makes a difference and I get over it and then I'm happy and I'm fine and good. Um, so this week, we um, Tyson's already talked about it, so we've been trying to plan a lot more video content that we can use for our newcomers because we envisage that we're going to have a lot more staff next year. Not really my strong point to plan, so that's been challenging this week and that's what he was alluding to in terms of getting people to do things outside of their normal or just getting to do it and then provide feedback after that. Um, Lots of chats to practitioners this week, particularly from a clinical perspective to try and give them a little bit of, I don't know, just give them a different thought process around their clients for the end of the year to An make example. sure that they're still trying to progress and track. Um, yeah, okay, sweet. So currently got a client who has been on OptiFast for uh, maybe two months, mm. not really lost any weight. Yeah. So trying what, to three checks a day. No, kind of just been running at their own race. So what do you mean? So I haven't actually been sticking to the recommendations as per the practice. So what do they do? Well, they might have one shake and they might have a couple of pieces of fruit and maybe a meal here and there and they might have a drink of alcohol and So they're not an OptiFast. Well, they believe they are. So pretty much the plan was if person wanted to start on OptiFast. Um, definitely the practitioner themselves have struggled with maintaining that client's adherence and motivation and have just not been using it in the way that it was intended to be used at the beginning. Um, so that was one of them. Another one. So what advice did you give? Mm, so pretty much trying to work with the client to give them more of ultimatums and trying to just deal with that client engagement side of things is the reason why um, and then trying to give her some ideas about how to construct the conversation to maybe then say it's not the best idea. How would they construct the conversation? You're saying a lot without any saying anything. Yeah, I know. Well, it's really hard without giving, giving away specifics. Um, we well, don't have to say their name. Yeah, so trying to, trying to express the reasons for why that person wanted to start this in the first place. Um, identify how they're not achieving the goals that they identified with at the beginning and the reason for why they wanted to start it. Um, and also around... Start what? The weight loss journey? OptiFast? OptiFast. Yeah. 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 So it was going to be used as a bit of a kickstart for him um, and didn't really, hasn't really followed the plan. So it has just been the same issues throughout. And the reason why he wanted to start something like this was he felt like it would be a really nice controlled regime but has definitely struggled to actually follow it at any way, shape or form. So it has lost weight, but definitely not the realms and the numbers. So what I gave the practitioner was some ideas around figures so she could just use that as a little bit of you know, bit of support as a reason why he's not really achieving the results that he planned to. Um, so just trying to give him the information to either then continue or to stop um, or just give him a reality check that there's no point for him. Um, another one was around Duramine, so one of the client, one of the clients is taking Duramine. Uh, the results, again, weren't really there, um, and that client was only on one meal a day because he didn't want to eat anything because he wasn't hungry. So whilst yeah, the... Was Duramine? Yeah, pretty much. And whilst the desired effect was being achieved, actually the, just the weight loss is, isn't um, ensuing. Why? Well, he doesn't really feel... He didn't really feel that hungry prior to... Uh, his GP recommended it just as something to help him with more weight loss, but he's only lost maybe a kilo since being on the Duramide. So what should 
You being on? Should you be on Jeremiah? No. What should you be on? Nothing. Nothing? No. Yeah. And certainly around the quality of the diet, what he's eating is, it hasn't actually been the best quality. So some of the recommendations I gave to him was just try and actually get him to improve the quality, select particular foods only. Um, and maybe we might increase the amount of food that he's eating to see whether that actually improves his weight loss. Um, but really with Duramide, it doesn't work for everybody. The dose also may not be strong enough either. He is taking it at prescription. But it, it's, How does Duramine actually work? What is it? It's sort of like an amphetamine, so it actually just increases someone's metabolic rate to a certain extent, um, and it can also then suppress appetite. So it works similar to smoking, I guess, with that appetite suppressing effect. But it only, well, drugs are only as good as they actually work for the person. So when they're being up to, um, uptook, it certainly makes some people have really, really bad symptoms. So they might get night sweats, they might get really high blood pressure or nightmares, they can't sleep. And then you know if that person is super sensitive to the drug because they're getting symptoms, it means that it's probably working better for them. Um, whereas somebody else who doesn't actually get a lot of symptoms, doesn't really feel any different when they're on a drug that's supposed to actually make them feel different, then it's likely not to be as successful with that person. So generally a way for me to gauge whether it's going to be useful or not is how they're feeling on it. Um, he has so you want them to feel like shit? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It would be the same if, I'm, if I've got someone on an elimination diet or a FODMAP diet or whatever. If they're not really feeling any different after following it, or they're not really feeling any different if they do a challenge, well then I probably chosen the wrong thing for them. So the OptiFast is exactly the same. If you're not feeling different or getting results on it, then there's no point to it. If you're on Jeremiah again, not getting any results from it, then there's just generally no point. And again, it's just that individual person reacting differently to an environment. And that environment obviously doesn't work very well and therefore you can't extrapolate all medic medicines, you can't extrapolate all diets to everybody because it's not going to work the same way in, in everyone. So, um, so that's some examples of it, just to try and give people different perspectives because I think um, towards the end of the year with a lot of the team and certainly with our clients, we tend to get a little bit you know, laser fair and, and partic particularly as everyone knows they're going to get to Christmas and either eat more or eat less or pull it away. Um, instead of letting them just continue down that track, it's sometimes just giving them some new ideas or some suggestions around clients that they've struggled with to try and g them up towards the end of the year. Yeah, and like some of the recommendations that I gave well, a couple of weeks ago to the whole crew was around using it as motivation rather than demotivation. So a lot of people go, oh, don't worry about it because I've got a Christmas and I'll fall off the wagon anyway. It's just like, yeah, but how about we kick some goals before we get there so that when you fall off the wagon, you don't fall as far. So, you know, using that as the motivation can be really useful because then people are like, all right, to this point, I'm going to smash myself because of this. I'm going to follow this to a T. I'm going to do the Optifast or I'm going to do whatever to how you have it so we can get some results prior to rather than if you just stay the same or you start tracking up before you even get to Christmas, by the time you get after Christmas, you've got to just backtrack. And, and that's where people say that weight management doesn't work is because like that allowance of that to happen. Whereas if you're just doing an ebbs and flows, it doesn't have to be this constant down the slope, but you need to be aware of where things are going to happen and just kind of counteract it. Um, it's just like if you overeat at lunchtime, most people to counterbalance should have a smaller dinner. Um, it's just trying to do that on scale over a long term and just recognizing you're going to have a large lunch large lunch at Christmas or dinner mm -hmm. and New Year's and drinks and a two-week camping trip. But and, then it's, yeah. And we, and we know, I mean, at the end of the day, we know what our clients will be like. So we're still know, human. Yeah, 100%. Human. We know, know what we're going to do like. that. And then what we'll know also is they'll come back into January and they'll be feeling really bad or really guilty or they just don't feel themselves. They might feel sluggish or they feel bloated. And you're preempting the fact that potentially that's going to happen. But let's say, for example, they've lost two or three kilos prior to Christmas in the month of December. Then they're going in and they potentially may not have that feeling and they may not then be backtracking exactly like Tyson said. And so that in itself has an improvement in their mental capacity and the way they feel going into Christmas. And then therefore they might actually just use it like it is another day. So it, it's just knowing your clients, knowing how they respond in different situations, either giving them advice to stick strictly to things or just give them that ad lib. Um, and guaranteed it will affect the outcome whether you don't give them advice or not, but even like actually have those conversations, yeah. ask them what their goals are around Christmas. Yeah, it actually removes their guilt. It's not about making them feel guilty. It actually helps remove it. 
um, so that people think, oh, you don't want to do that because then they feel guilty about it. It's like, well, no, it's giving them the opportunity to actually go do that without guilt and not come back and feel like, oh, I failed. You know, so it's having those conversations and getting them results and then having a really honest conversation around, look, you're likely going to gain weight, most people do. If you don't, that'd be great. But what I want to do is this, mm. this, and this. Yeah. And it's just enjoy yourself, you know, be human. But if you're a dietitian that tells them to not eat, not enjoy themselves, then you're definitely not going to work for us. <laughs> but like, it's just not, not good. It's just not good for the clients, not good for business and not a good human. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, yeah, good clients as per usual. Generally, my clinic's pretty busy. I um, spoke to a client um, this week around their pathology results after having cancer. Um, and crazily enough, it's the best numbers we've ever seen on all levels. Uh, lipids, HBA, um, GFR, and even their urea levels are all pretty good as well. So, so only has one kidney. For the people that are students and don't know what the hell you're talking about, what are those? Yeah, so eGFR is pretty much your kidney filtration rate, so how effectively your kidneys are clearing your urine, blood, whatever. Um, so as you can imagine, anyone with only one kidney is going to have a slower GFR. Generally, depending on factors, it, it should improve or at least stay the same. <laughs> How deep are you going down this friggin' hole? Yeah, I know. All right, HBA on C, what's that? Yeah, it's just your average marker of your glycemic control. Yep, cool. Your blood glucose levels, yep. But it is a measure of glycemia. Um, yep, cool, so that one was mint, perfect. Um, the last 12 months has come down from 7.1 to 6.1, so happy days. Um, triglycerides, cholesterol levels, all the above. Um, had a lot better, hopefully you should know what that looks like. Um, and the ratio was perfect, 3.3. It should be less than four, just putting it out there, your total cholesterol and HDL. Good marker of HDL. Um, kind of 1.14. Yeah, but that's in, in fact improved over the last 12 months as well. Show you this person's on statins, so you're always gonna have a fake reading, but we know that statins don't really affect triglyceride um, and they don't increase good cholesterol. So therefore those factors in themselves can be completely related to their diet, their health, in that respect too. So happy days. Um, one of my clients, um, she, she came in, she had a huge number of allergies reported, whether it's confirmed or not, um, wanted her to go and get SPTs and, and things like that What's done. That? Um, so skin prick tests. And to be honest, actually it was a learning experience for me. These days they're not routinely doing it um, through general practice anymore. They're recommending the RAS test, so which is the equivalent to a skin prick, but actually for a blood test. But I reckon that's all around dollars and also particularly around capabilities of GPs or client people to actually read and interpret. So when you're doing skin prick tests, the interpretation of that, you have to have a skilled interpreter. So a lot of the time people just don't have the capacity to do skin prick tests that often. So a RAS test is really easily um, achieved. It's minimally invasive, but depending on the lab, they'll have a different mix. And really with the mix, you're not going to get all the things you want to get seen, to be honest. So probably not the best, um, but that's changed now. So anytime you're recommending someone get an allergy test, that would be the one that you would recommend as the first point of entry. What's it called? RAS. R-A-S-T, R-A-S-T, RAST, RAST, test. What does it stand for, you know? <laughs> Radio <laughs> immunology is something, a say test or something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's pretty much just an allergen test of IgE mediated, yeah. Um, cool, so yeah, so this client came to me crazy symptoms. She was on the elimination diet already. She was getting mass migraines. She's always had, some, always had migraines, but they've gotten worse. Um, her skin as well, she was sort of covered and full in eczema and she'd come to me pretty much just wanting me to guide her in the direction she was going and say to her that it was right, but she was struggling with a really limited diet. Um, so what did I do? I tried to normalise a lot of her thoughts around what she thought was making her symptoms worse um, versus what actually was making her symptoms worse. So she was under the impression that sugar across the board was giving her a migraine um, she couldn't eat any form of wheat, so she'd taken that out as well. And then also dairy too. What we know with migraines though is it's a huge genetic link. To, there's a huge hormonal link. And so therefore this woman was in her 40s. It's likely gotten worse because she's getting closer to menopause. 
Um, but then on top of that, she's got a lot of background stress and she's got kids with all these other issues. So really it's just situational. What do I do? I encouraged her along the same path as she was taking, but I challenged her views around what she thought was creating the situation for her. Um, so she came back for a review and I actually got her to do some challenges, particularly the first ones we did with Celeste Slate and Aiming, just to try and liberalise her diet back because it was terrible and I really wanted to make sure we fixed that really quickly. Um, and she, huge reaction to uh, Aiming containing foods. So they caused her a great amount of migraine, um, yeah, a massive migraine, but that's okay. Um, it was always going to happen and uh, I mean rich foods are just limiting the salicylate. So with her salicylate challenge, she actually managed to get through around four to five days, which was really good before she started to feel a little bit. But again, it wasn't this big a reaction. She also started cooking um, some more food. So she's actually incorporating a lot more wheat back into her diet. We just decided we'd um, jump ship on that and she was baking and having things with sugar and she wasn't getting a migraine. Uh, so she said she felt a lot more comfortable with the food because she was really, really anxious about eating anything that she thought is going to just give her a migraine because she can't handle it. Mm. So that was only after one session. She definitely was much better in a better space. She liberalised the diet back and she was keen to keep going through the rest of the, the challenges and get to a space where she could actually um, get, expand the diet out. She thought she had an egg allergy as well too. That's why I wanted to get a rust test. Um, but again, she's eaten egg in a number of forms because I encourage her to just do that. So I tried to get her to bake the egg to see how she tolerated it because most people don't tolerate egg in a poached form. And she was fine with it. So, yeah, and that for her was a good way to just distinguish between the fact that she thinks there's a problem versus there actually is a problem. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah, some of the clients that I've seen this week, some of the challenges, what I would do, how I would do it, uh, and then also helping other people with the same sort of things. And that's it? Yeah. That's enough? Mm. Peter liked talking there at the end. Yeah, well see, comparison to that sort of stuff that you talk about and you get all jazzed about, I still get all jazzed about that. And good. Showing people that they actually can make things better. Yeah, well you know what you're doing, so. Yeah, <laughs> confidence through repeat. All right, see you.